Good evening. Welcome to Reflections on East Granby. My name is Mike Malloy and I'll be your host this evening. Our guest tonight is Charles Chady, a resident of East Granby and an active member of the community for quite a long time. Uh, we are going to be sharing his story with you tonight. This is our first show of 2010 or 2010, however you choose to say it. Uh, and so let's get started. Tonight's date, I wanted to just share. Tonight's Mike. date is January 9th, 2010. Yep. Okay. Charlie, how you doing tonight? Good. Good, Good. I think. <laughs> Our guest is Charles Chady. He's a resident of 70 North Main Street. He's been very uh, kind to come in here tonight on short notice, so we're going to yeah, cut him some you. slack and let him, <laughs> let him uh, go where he wants with this tonight. Uh, why don't we start out with uh, a little information on yourself. You were born in 1931. That's correct. You're yeah. 78 years old. That I am. In pretty good shape. For the shape I'm in. Yeah, for the shape you're in. There you go. You uh, you were. Why don't you give us a little bit of background on yourself? Let's start with where you were born. Uh, what your okay. memories are. That's kind of interesting. I was born in 912 New Britain Avenue in Hartford. No kidding. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Rather than all the hospitals. Now, where is that in uh, New Britain Avenue? How far up is that? Because New Britain Avenue goes all the way up from the. Uh, all right. It's within a half a mile of West Hartford. So you were right on the border, basically. Almost. Yes. Yeah. And uh, from there, we moved to Elmwood. Okay. West Hartford. Uh, West Hartford, yep. yeah. People back then didn't like to call Elmwood part of West Hartford, but... Really? Oh, yes. It was quite a distinction. We were the other side of the tracks at the time. Your own little burg there. Huh? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but anyway, uh, all the good ball players and stuff came from East Granby. Oh, Or from um, <laughs> Elmwood. Elmwood. Oh, right. yeah, you know, so they kept the high schools going with... Uh, Soccer players and ball players and stuff like that. Okay, but, uh, so that's a kind of a silly story, but but yeah. that's the way it was. Back yeah, yeah. Then, you know, something to be proud of. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I can remember uh, riding the trolleys right. uh, back and forth to the Hartford down to Britain Avenue. Uh, I can remember as a kid meeting the trolley. It always stopped in the center of Elmwood. Right. And uh, flipping the seats for the trolley guy. To go the other direction. To go in the other direction. The trolley right. museum in East, East Windsor. I, that, my son gets a kick out of that. He, right. around. he used to get mad as heck at us because we always tried to slam him, and, and he didn't want his seat slammed. Okay. And, and, of course, he was out changing the the thing that goes on the wire, the the probe that rides on the wire. He had to take this one down and put this one up. Ch and, change and, the voltage so, direction, yeah. right? Yeah. So anyway... Uh, yeah, we, you know, that's my early, some of my early. How old were you then, you, when you say? Oh, I don't know, probably eight, maybe okay. nine. Yeah. Uh, you see, we went through the uh, uh, hurricane. 38? 38, 38 yeah. which I remember distinctly. Uh, I think I was in second grade and my sister was in the first grade. Right. And uh, we were released late. From school late yes they they didn't have a handle on this storm there was no weather service no yeah. but other people apparently who are listening to radios and stuff came in after their kids and took them home but yeah. my mom didn't have the radio on or anything didn't realize what kind of a storm it was and so my sister Betty and I uh, Hand in hand up uh, New Britain Avenue, and the trees are falling down behind. Yeah, us. that's the story I get from a lot of people. <laughs> yeah. It's interesting. It was really uh, pretty scary. For now, did you get out late because they held you in school, or you just got out well, late? Oh yeah. It just they, so uh, well, yeah. I guess finally what they decided was they wanted to go home, so they sent us home. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> then they sent you walking yeah, home. Yeah, right. Nice. Well, see, you walked anyhow. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it yeah. didn't make any difference. Wow. But uh, you know that's the way it was. Uh, uh, and that was a you know an interesting uh, yeah uh, sure time quite a memory oh yeah yeah, yeah. and and there's something we'll probably never forget we lost trees all over the place yeah in the yard and all kinds of things so that was a, a pretty exciting time uh, kept going to school there went to Elmwood Elementary School and from there I went to talk at Junior High School that was in West Hartford yeah no that was in Elmwood. Oh, okay. And then I'm William sorry. H. Hall. I and that was in West Hartford. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and, uh, uh, you know, graduated in a uh, class of 50. Right. Uh, and from then on, uh, I joined the Air National Guard. In high school? And, uh, yeah, right after high school. And uh, 
didn't see any good direction to be going in at the time. But uh, uh, finally, uh, we were inducted in during the uh, uh, fair in uh, uh, Korea. Right. And uh, we were stationed down in Long Island. So we're in the late 40s now. Uh, yeah, 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 early 50s. Early 50s. Yes, and uh, to 52 about, I guess. Okay. I got to be careful because there's an awful lot of National Guard guys that are still around. And yeah, still they're going to call you if they, you get it wrong. You better believe it. <laughs> A guy I have coffee with every morning, as a matter of fact. <laughs> okay. But anyway, uh, so, oh, and a very interesting story about that guard time. I traveled, of course, from West Hartford to Bradley Field. Right. Every day. Right. With a gang of guys that were in the guard with me from that area. Right. And uh, there was this woman who was driving down the street going towards West Hartford. Okay. Uh, kind of a cute redhead. Yeah. So, uh, you know, we kept eyeballing her, you know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, and because we'd see her every morning and give her a big wave. Yeah, and absolutely. You know. Doing your job. Well, one morning, <laughs> she stopped at yeah. a guy's house whose mom I knew, and she picked up his mom. Oh. And they went into work. So I called Ruth and I said, uh, Who's the little redheaded? Yeah. And so she told me, and that's how I met my wife. Are you kidding? <laughs> no. Wow, no kidding. Huh. Yeah. So I that's always been an and interesting her name? thing. Patricia. What was her baby? Cannon. Okay, yeah, Patricia Cannon. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. And she comes from a lineage of cannons around. Yeah. Uh Suffield and you know, East. Little red headed cannon you picked up. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so uh it, that just escalated into a marriage. Yes, yeah, escalated <laughs> in fifty two. So uh it was fun. Right. And of course uh, you know, the impetus to come home from Long Island as many times as I could. Absolutely. That, of course. You know. yeah. But uh, from then on, after I got out, uh, before that, I was working in electrical wholesale houses in Hartford. Okay. Worked for F.A. Blesso, uh, which is long since gone, uh, electrical wholesalers and places like that. Right. And... <laughs> Even though they were supposed to hire me back after I got out, that never happened. Okay. They, they wouldn't do it. So I went looking for work. And I had an uncle who worked for the Hartford Electric Light Company. All right. And so I went in to see them. And, uh, of course, they didn't have any openings because all these guys are coming home and stuff. You Tough know, times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And so I was kind of persistent with their uh, personnel person, a gal by the name of Alice. And... Uh, I told her, I said, Alice, you know, be prepared to see me at least once a week until you decide that you need oh, me. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's one way to get a job, right? <laughs> so after about the sixth week or so, she said, right. I can see Charlie, you're fairly persistent. Yeah. So consequently, I'll find you something. Right. Well, they handed me a shovel. Yep. And away I went digging ditches. I learned how to dig ditches from a couple of the... Uh, best Italian dish, ditch diggers I ever oh, met. Oh, wow, okay. No and right. they told me how to do it without killing myself, yeah. but how to dig the ditch. So right. That was learning experience number one. Uh, from there, I graduated to uh, driving a, a loader and backhoe and things of that sort. And, and the next thing I know, I was put onto a, what they call a pole layout crew, crew. And we laid out every pole line in the Hartford Electric Light Company area. No kidding. Yeah, except towns were divided in half. Half was Sinetco and half was Hartford Electric Light. Right. And we did it in the Hartford Electric Light side. So they used to do all that manually back then. Oh, yeah. Wow. I, you, know, you know, you don't think of that. You think of some of the things you, you, that are done just to take for granted. That's right. So what happened was I, I used to, I built all the pole maps. Right. And located them poles on every map on every street in the Hartford Electric Light Company area. Okay. Maintained those maps and did the pole layout work. Uh, after that, uh, I, my dad was a, an electrician by trade. Right. Uh, and a, a heating and cooling guy. And, you know, I kind of leaned that way. Uh, however, I, I did some time at Hillier. Uh, to try and improve my my head bone, but uh, it, it was hard to do because kids were coming and things were happening. Yeah, busy at home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. 
But uh, so I never completed college. But on the other hand, where did you go? Hillier. Hillier. Where's that? <laughs> That's the forerunner to University of Hartford. Okay. Right, 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 right. It was a fairly small operation at first. Huh? Yeah, yeah, it was yeah. on Washington Street next to the state police headquarters. No kidding. Well, yeah. I didn't realize it was and, that far off. Uh, uh, I, you know, I took my uh, uh, engineering uh, courses for. Uh, uh, civil engineering and what have you. So I understood what I was doing with the pole layout crew. Right, right, day. right. Just kind of a addition to your yeah, work. Yeah, yeah, right. You're right, trying to better yeah. the, the situation. Then uh, came along a job, and I had some really good mentors at the light company, really good people that wanted right. to see me get ahead, which was great. Yeah. And uh, Makes so, all the difference. Oh, yeah. yeah. So anyway... Um, I got into this, uh, uh, into what we called in the inspection department. Okay. Where we went out and inspected all types of electrical services, new ones being put in. Right. And uh, that way you got to know all, your, know all the electrical contractors, you got to know... Now let me ask you a question, did they have building departments then that would go out and confirm it, or you guys oh, did, yeah. you did it all? Oh, no, no. 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 So there was a two, two But we worked kind of close together. Okay, yeah. Uh, there were some towns that if we said it was okay, they said it was okay. Okay. But towns like West Hartford, until they got to know you really well, they went out and checked to see if okay. you were doing yeah. it right or yeah. not. And uh, if, you know, they found out that you were being legit about the thing... Uh, they backed off. Yeah, they, yeah. They, they might go out a couple of days later and check the job out rather than... Right, uh, Before right. they re-energize the service. Right. So um, that was a fun job. I enjoyed that and yeah. met an awful lot of people. Well, <laughs> shortly after that, or right after that time, I uh, went to work at the company on a job where we had two-phase service, which you've probably never heard of. You've but, heard of three-phase yes. service. <laughs> And single-phase service, but we had two-phase service okay. in Hartford and West Hartford and places like that. It was my job to go in and survey all the two-phase buildings and write up the specs for converting them to three-phase. Okay. And it, it's really a, a lengthy project because two-phase is five wires, right. three-phase is four wires, Okay. or three. Right. And so consequently, you lost a leg someplace along the line. You had to balance loads and things of that sort. Okay. Well, I got into it pretty good. Yeah. And uh, r really, we converted a heck of a lot of properties over to three-phase from the old two-phase. Right. Buildings like 242 Trumbull Street, which are good-sized buildings. You know, right. 266 Pearl Street, our headquarters, I did that building. So your your job was to go in and kind of lay out the logistics that were going to be necessary, what they were going to need. Put to it out in. for bid. Okay. Right. And uh, accept the bids. Right. And then oversee that the job was done the way I wanted it. Sign off on it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And and it worked. You know, okay, yeah. it, I really really enjoyed it. Yeah. After that, we kind of, you know, finished up that kind of area and. Uh, another job came along, and I had a couple of, as I say, mentors down there that were really good to me. And uh, they got me into um, the uh, uh, industrial power sales department. Okay. And I was an industrial sales rep, uh -huh. uh, which was in the company quite a prestigious job at the time. Right. We called on, for instance, I had customers like uh, West Farms Mall. Travelers Insurance Company. No, no, no. Let's, what, what did that entail? I mean, was there was there op options for those places or who they used for their power back then? No, was, no, no, I didn't think no. so. So what did you? No, they were selling? using it, but we kept that customer happy. Okay, right. And if they needed anything, or, or for instance, if they wanted to uh, maintain their switch gear and have an outage, we took care of that. Right. You right. know, and did all that thing. And we're talking about giant switch gear in these. So it was more there. customer service. Your job yeah, was to make sure totally, if they needed yeah. something, you got it done. Yeah. yeah. But you know, I called on small customers, uh, small machine tool factories, and stuff, right. where I got to know the presidents right. and their families in some cases, right. and uh, things of this sort. We had a real decorum going there. Oh. So it was really, really quite nice. Uh, from that, uh, and they broke, broke up that industrial sales department, and they went to what we call an energy management 
Services Department. Okay. And <clears throat> I became uh, the manager of the Energy Management Service Department in right. Simsbury. Okay. And uh, there I had uh, six great people working for me, uh, all of them engineers but one. And uh, they did much the same thing, you know, as consultants, but they were working in the energy management at that time. We're, and of course, you got to remember, we went from Hartford Electric Light yeah, Company, say, Connecticut Power, Power Company, right, right. to Connecticut Light and Power Company. So right. we went through an awful lot of changes in that period of time. Right. Corporate then, shaking up. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Very, <laughs> very yeah. pronounced. Yeah. So anyway, um, what years are we talking? When you started there in the fifties? Well, I started in fifty-two. And you went up to uh, now, now. We're into what the sixties, seventies here. What we're talking about? Yeah, probably okay. sure. Right. Uh, and that's where my head bone lets me down no, because okay. I can't remember dates and we're not testing you. and stuff like that. But anyway, uh, uh, all that stuff transpired. Hmm. Transpired in that period, right? Um, and and of course, Simsbury was the last job I held. Uh, when in uh, 1990, they said, "Shady, we had enough of you. We're golden handshake. Uh, okay. We're shaking up this place and doing away with energy management." And, right. And so I s thought about it long because I wasn't really old enough to leave. Yeah. But um, uh, the. Bennies were so good that I right. couldn't afford to, to yeah. not go. So I did. And that left me with nothing to do. Well, fortunately, what came along at that time was a big plan in the company to change all the light bulbs in every state facility to an energy efficient lighting system. Huh. From the largest one that could be done, which is the health center. Right, you could. With 10 million fluorescent tubes that were changed. 10 million? Oh, at least. Really? Yes. Wow. And, <laughs> and of course, all the ballast yeah. and things of that sort in the right, fluorescent right. fixtures had to be changed. Um, every light bulb was changed. Okay. A funny part about that, I did the prisons out in Enfield. Okay. And uh, we did one small prison and uh, took the 150 watt bulbs that the prisoners had over their desk like and put in 13 watt fluorescents okay now that was a problem because they used a 150 watt bulb to heat up their toasted sandwiches oh, and the no. 13 water didn't no no didn't you don't get no cheat i guess that's the point but yeah. <laughs> so anyway now you gotta put a toaster on me <laughs> yeah well no what they did is make deals with the guards and sent them the 13 watts home with them and let them bring back the 150 Oh, wires. really? Okay. <laughs> but it was really comical, but strange yeah, things yeah. like that were happening. Yeah, interesting, yeah, yeah. And of course, in I didn't that even joke, realize they had compact for us since that far back. Oh, yeah. 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 Well, oh, sure. Well. That's when we started with them. They were a little, quite a bit different than a little they more are primitive. Today. Yeah, bigger. Yeah, they were bigger and slower. Yeah. They didn't eat up as fast. Right. And things of that sort, but they still only use 13 watts, and yeah. that was the whole secret. It's huge when you're talking yeah. millions of light bulbs. Yeah. The exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah, those all went from, uh, uh, what the heck were they, uh, was down to 38 watts for the, the four footers like these. Right. And, uh, you know, significant saving when uh, you're yeah. talking in hundreds. You Absolutely. Know. Yeah. So, anyway, Besides my retirement, I got paid for doing that job. Right. So that was the best years of my life as far as pay goes. You were still young enough to work hard and enjoy it and yeah. have, have yeah. money. Right. <laughs> be, be paid well. more, more money than I ever right. had. Right. So that was kind of fun. Uh, Let's just jump yeah. back a little bit because you have five kids? Five. Okay. Why don't we just, uh, because we're at kind of at a transition point in your career there, yeah. why don't we jump back and just... Uh, I'll, I'll test you here a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> all, all five of your kids, if you could do them somewhat in a... Sure. Can I, you do them in order? Oh, I, I think so. But, okay. Uh, <laughs> they're watching. <that's>, <laughs> yeah, they will be probably. <laughs> Luann, Laurie, Eddie, okay. whose name is Charles, but we had to call him Eddie because he, that wouldn't work. Way too confusing. Yeah. yeah uh, <laughs> Pam and okay. Karen. Okay. So that's, that's the five of them. Uh, a very interesting thing. Uh, Three of them live in East Granby. Right. One of them in Granby. Okay. And one of them in West Hartford. Oh. So <laughs> they're all really, really close by. You, you left, really, you left really your mark great. in each. Yeah. Granby's yeah, a yeah. winger, but it's close. Right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, oh, they'd, they'd have been in East Granby if the right house came along okay, at the yeah, time, I'm yeah. sure. But uh, uh, So anyway, uh, uh, of that, uh, Pam has uh, three children, uh, Teddy, who yep. you've met, yep. and uh, Andrew, uh, and uh, Rebecca. Rebecca's still in high school. Okay. Uh, and uh, Eddie had two girls, okay. Ashley and Emily, and uh, uh, both of them are still going to school, college, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, hopefully we'll come up with some, you know, uh, RN or something like that. Good jobs out of the mix. There you go. <laughs> so <laughs> so we're, we're kind of excited about that. Yeah. Um, let's see. During that time, I... Uh, Served on the Granbrook Park Commission. Okay. Do you, you ever hear of Granbrook? Well, actually, you our last guest. You live on it. I, well, I know, no, well, my business. Yeah, business. Yeah, 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 yeah. But um, our last guest, uh, Chick Veets, yeah. was involved somehow with the yes, inception of Granbrook Park, right? He was involved no, with the. Well, not that. We had quite a flood in '55. Yeah, he talked a bit about it in the last show, but go ahead. Yeah. What, what's the. Uh, and so. Uh, uh, I remember that. Oh, so I was on the Granbrook Park Commission. Uh, from there, I was on, uh, oh gosh, every board in town with the exception of planning and zoning. Okay. And I chaired every board in town. Okay. All the way, you know, from Board of Finance down. Yep. Okay. And as I say, I served with Bill Mayer on the Board of Selectmen. Right. Uh, and don't ask. What years did we talk? Just roughly what years? Well, with Bill, I don't remember. Seventies, eighties. Uh, must have been eighties. Eighties. Okay. Yeah. yeah. It, it was before Frank Rothhammer. Okay. Uh, took office there, and uh, then I took office in uh, as first as first elected right. in uh, nineteen ninety one, and that went through nineteen ninety. Four. So interesting that you kind of transitioned off your light bulb project. <laughs> you brought yeah, all your good ideas project, yeah. to East Ramby, right? So, or something. Something like that. But uh, at any rate, that's... So you were, uh, that, was that a full-time position at the time? Was it a paid full-time job? Uh, for selectman? For selectman? Yeah, of course, every starting teacher made more than I did. But, oh, well, uh, that's probably not quite <laughs> still the case, but it's close. Yeah, yeah. But it, it, was, a, it was a legitimate... Job. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. It was definitely a legitimate <laughs> job. Uh, uh, to well, if we're talking about the selectman job. Uh, right. Uh, while I was in office, I covered our landfill so that it was safe. Uh, we used to have a giant landfill there, and, right? And it needed to be covered, and so we covered it with clay and and topsoil and grass and right and made it so that the thing won't effervesce and. Yeah, uh, you know, it was quite a project, huh? Yeah, it was yeah. pretty expensive too. Yeah. But we were lucky because at the time they were building 91 and there was a section in Windsor that had a ton of clay in it and they didn't know what to do with it. And you raised your hand real quick for that, huh? Come on, guys. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> so wow. they were very happy to get rid of all this That's clay. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, also, uh, let's see, we, oh, I uh, completed the road. It was down in front of Mark's, uh, what the heck's the name of that road, uh, uh, off of East Street. Uh, goes over into Bradley Field. It's not going to come to me. I know yeah. you're talking. It connects to the, to the perimeter road. Yes. Yeah, right, right. That was nothing. That was, that, it stopped kind of Russell Road. Russell Road. Right, right, right. So I did that project with a lot of help from the state, but we built Russell Road. And the state fixed up East Street from 20 to Russell Road. Oh, okay. So we had a pretty nice uh, setup there. Yeah. Which is a couple of things that, that I was pretty proud of being yeah, able yeah. to do. So that, uh, it well, uh, tied that area together. Right. Uh, four years I was first selectman. I never raised the taxes once. Really? Wow. Yeah. yeah. I, I was pretty proud of that because a lot of people ticked off at me because I didn't spend enough money. Everybody's you know, got their view, right? Yeah, I suppose, whatever <laughs> turns you on. But, <laughs> right. but that's the way I, right, I right. felt that, yeah. you know, it was my job. We got more money every year from, uh, you know, more taxes. Right. And so instead of just spending beyond that, I stayed with So that. you stayed within whatever the tax 
rate generated. So you actually were increasing the budget, but staying, not yeah, actually yeah. raising the mill rate. Right, right exactly. Okay. Right. So uh, uh, that's kind of a, uh, the story of, of my first selectman days. But yep. back to 55 and the flood. Right. I would, you know, of course, all this time I've been a volunteer fireman, too. Okay. So uh, as a volunteer fireman, we were called out in 55. And I got up that morning and uh, that they were talking about flooding and uh, all over the place in Granbrook Park and those areas. And at the time, I lived in School Street, at, on School Street, right across from the old school. Okay. Our library was on the hill next to us. Where they have the daycare now. Yes. Yeah, right. And of course, I don't the town know. Hall if you, was right next to it, wasn't it? Uh, uh, no. Where the, the bank is now? Uh, oh, <laughs> I'm talking before that. Oh, okay. All right. All right. I lived in the little house across from the school. Okay. Up on the hill from our house right. was the original town hall and okay. the library. Right. And that got burned down. Uh, and consequently, uh, uh, it moved into the end of the firehouse, which is on School Street, opposite the cemetery, okay. where the <laughs> where the bank is now. Okay, and so the, everything got jumped, yeah, jumped around right, there. Right. Right. Okay. Yep. So anyway, so let's get that straight because that's an interesting little slice. That that you you live in is the house still there? Yes, our house is still there. Brown. Yes. Okay, I yeah. think I know the house. Yeah. And up behind you was the town hall. Yes, up on the hill. And that burned. Yes. And there was a firehouse next to your house going more? No, to no. There was uh, uh, three houses at least in there. Okay. The, the White House, which was just bought, it was known as McKinney's House. Okay. Then the Brook, and then the Bank, but that was where the firehouse and the town hall was. Oh, okay. So Almost after it burned the on the hill, they moved it into that spot. Oh, yeah. They, I don't know. I, you know, that's kind of foggy in my mind because yeah. that wasn't occupied as a town hall the whole time I was in town. And, you know, so yeah. I don't know where they are operating from. You know, I guess town halls operated a little differently back in those days. Yeah, than, yeah. Like out of people's homes and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> we're so, under the records. We're, yeah, right? yeah, right. <laughs> so I, I, you know, I should know where the heck that town hall was, but. Uh, the, We're the going last, back a few years. Yeah, the last one I remember was next to the firehouse, and that was after something happened that was kind of something burned or some gall darn thing, and we lost the, t the building that we used as the town hall. Okay. And that's why that was All right. moved in there. So that was a pretty yeah. congested little center in its day. It was a well, little bit more, more or less, yeah. More going on, a lot more going on right on the streets. Yeah. Than, and uh, you, and you got to remember, you know, Route 20 didn't go down by the church. Right. Route 20 was down School Street. Right through School Street, right. Yeah, right. So everybody going up west uh, of here had to go right down. Yeah, right. Right, right okay. past all that. And um, so anyway, uh, uh, oh, to get back to the to the flood. Yeah. I got up in the morning and uh, it was raining pretty hard and uh, went out and uh, gosh, our cellar door was left open. Okay. But there was very little water downstairs in the amount of rolled beans. And right. So I closed that and we went out. Well, every place where a brook went under the road was going over the road. Right. And so they said they were having all kinds of problems over in Granbrook Park. So we managed to get over there by going uh, down uh, uh, into Granby and uh, taking, uh, I don't know what the heck's the name of that street in Granby that goes uh, to the left along the brook there. Uh, just before the brook. Anyway. Oh, Canal Street? Yeah, Canal. Yeah, Canal well, well, it turns it, into. Well, that's, it turns into something going the other way, but yeah. we were going, in, at this point in time, going south. Going so, heading south, yeah. 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 And so it brought you back out onto Hartford Avenue, uh, you know, out near Simmons. Yep, yep. Uh, place. North Road. North Road. That's Canal the turns into north, and then it right. becomes, yeah, right. You got it. I'm glad your head to work in. Well, I, 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 sometimes. But anyway, uh, so we got down there, and there is a, a tragedy going on. Yeah, that's a... I mean, the water was running through there. I, I can't even describe what we, what we saw. Well, we went and got a boat that uh, 
Red Littell had an old uh, uh, aluminum boat, which was good, right? and stuck a motor on it. And we went out and to try and pick people off of rooftops and bring them in. You know, right. Because you've probably looked at the trestle since you've been here. Yeah, well, they just redid it for the yeah, trail. That's right. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. Well, of course, that was knocked down during the 55. It actually flood. got wiped out. Yeah, the tracks were hanging down. No kidding. Yeah, no, because no. It, it did get washed out. Yeah. The water was coming out of there. If you can visualize a fire hose laying on the ground without a, anything on the end of it. Right. And how the water, that's the way it was coming out of that Salmon Brook at that point. Just racing through like that. Well, a, yeah. racing through it and going 30 feet in the air. Wow. Yeah. So... Uh, the current was running really fast, and uh, we had a little outboard on the back of the boat. And right. Back in those days, outboard motors had little air vents on the top of the gas tank. Remember the little screw you loosened up? And right. We were going under a secondary wire. Now, this is, you know, you visualize the poles on the street. Right. And the secondaries were down and then up. So the water was that high. Yeah. Yeah. The lower wire on the secondary caught that little cap, that right. screw cap, and the pressure was so bad on the back of that boat that it swamped us. Really? Yes. Wow. And so, of course, the motor was dead. We were kind swamped. of like tripping somebody with their toe. That's yeah, just a little small see, cap. Yeah, stick yeah. It's yeah, only you know, yeah. it's not much more than a quarter of a yeah, minute. right. But that's the pressure that was there. So anyway, right. we got washed up against the house, and managed to pull the boat up and empty it out of water and and fortunately the oars and stuff were still in there uh, of course the motor wouldn't work and so we went um, got back into the boat and uh, rode around we were on our way out right. when we came across this house with a whole pile of people on the roof well one of the persons on the roof was uh, an invalid if you will right and uh, she couldn't walk or do anything else. So they called us over and asked if we would take her into dry land. Right. And we said, sure. So we loaded her into the bottom of the boat, and we were just ready to leave to go to dry land when the house went. And everybody on the roof jumped in the boat. Oh, no. Needless to say, she didn't make it. Oh, <laughs> you know, she was yeah. the only fatality that we had. She right, ended up right. under the bridge in Floydville. Wow. Uh, I ended up in a tree for several hours. I think Chick and Mike finally picked me out of a tree. Yeah, right, you know, right. And, yeah, uh, Chick was talking about that last yeah. time. Yeah, yeah. Uh, every creature in the world was in that tree beside me. <laughs> oh, <laughs> a lot of kelp company yeah, oh, there. Oh, <laughs> God. <laughs> Anything that didn't like water was up that tree. Yeah, right. <laughs> and, the, and the couple yeah. that were on the roof who had jumped into the boat along with... Uh, God, I can't remember for the life of me, but it seems to me, besides um, Shirley, her mother and father and a couple others were on that roof. Okay. And What were their last names? You remember? You don't Phelps. Remember. Phelps. Okay. Her name was Phelps, Shirley yeah. Phelps. Yeah. And um, so what happened was uh, we got washed down. Well, I got the rope on the tail end of the boat. Right. And we're going down hell-bent for election towards Floydville Road. Right. Well, I used to be a giant tobacco field in there. Okay. All I could see as I looked up was the tent cloth wires in a, like a great big net going across. Like where a grid, huh? Yeah. yeah. I'm saying, you, you don't know, want to get wrapped up in yeah, that. We get stuck there. I'm in deep <laughs> yeah, trouble. right. So we came to it, and big I said, if the, if the, yeah, yeah, really, that's what it amounted to. I said, if the boat makes it through, I'm going to make it through. Right. And the boat made it through, and I followed straight behind it. Wow. And so we hit the tree. Yeah. And <laughs> up the tree I went. So that was the end of that experience. It was, wow. It was uh, quite interesting. Uh, yeah, you're stuff. lucky to be sitting here. Yeah, yeah, in yeah. some respects. Quite yeah. a few respects, I guess. Yeah, quite a few of those people yeah. are lucky to have made it yeah. through. Yeah. Now, you, you, uh, you're up in the tree. What happened? Did okay. the water recede enough? Oh, no, no, no. Uh, finally, uh, Mike and Chick uh, oh, they came, right. came you in another that, yeah, boat they came and, and, they and uh, got me, and then I got the other couple, uh, Shirley's mother and father, out of the tree, which was, <laughs> you know, a few, <laughs> few yards away. Wow. Uh, and he was really something because he held on to her and held on to a branch on the tree. 
Phelps? Yeah, yeah, and held her up. And I don't know how long he did that. Wow. But it was just... In the current? The, in the current, yes. Wow. And, and at that point, it had widened out quite a bit. There was still a fierce current, current going Not through. Not to mention the temperature of the water couldn't have been that warm. No, well, I don't remember. Well, it wasn't too bad. It was May, right? Uh, uh, no, September, wasn't it? Oh, okay, so yeah. the water was probably still yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. reasonable. Yeah. So, that's right, September. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, uh, that's, that's my experience there. I, you know, a lot of them with the fire department, a lot of fun. Yeah, right. Uh, we, when I was in, we were one of the first ones to get uh, Scott Air Packs, which was brand spanking new at the time. And kind of revolutionized yeah, firefighting. Yeah, right? yeah you did, could actually yeah. go in after stuff. That, yeah, that's right. Before the fire yeah, was But out. it took a while to learn that you bring somebody with you or something like that. Right, now. right, right. <laughs> but anyway, uh, that's uh, another story. But uh, it was fun, I, and I yeah. really enjoyed uh, the camaraderie and, and what have you with the uh, fire department guys. Uh, and there's still quite a few of them around. Uh, yeah. Uh, so then, you know, the selectmen went through the selectmen thing, and uh, then I uh, kind of tried to uh, take it a little bit easier, uh, if you will. You were, you were and, supposed to be retired. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, uh, we did some vacationing and things of that sort, running around, and uh, but uh, I got hooked up uh, with the Over the Mountain Cemetery in West Suffield. And uh, that's on Phelps Road. You know, right, that's the one that goes behind the mountain? Well, it's, yeah. It's, it's behind the mountain on the hill? Is no, that, we're no? flat. Oh, it no. is? Okay. It's yeah. fairly flat. Where yeah. is it? On Phelps, Phelps Road. Road. Okay. Uh, if you went Griffin Road uh -huh. over to Suffield or West Suffield. Right, straight up. Yeah, yeah. well, you, you hit Phelps Road. It turns into. No, it, it's, it, it, it goes right, diagonally across, right. yeah. Right. Well, go. Towards uh, I don't know what the heck Mountain uh, Road. Mountain Road, right? Yeah, and it's on your right hand side. Yeah, there. yeah. It's, it's, it's kind of I, I, well, maybe I just haven't been geography wrong, but I thought it was on the back side of the mountain. Almost. Yeah, but it's, I well, guess it's down a little ways. Yeah. Well, yeah, it is. Yeah. and uh, so I got mixed up in that, and we've been messing around with that. And then last year, I when you said, what, what are you doing? I am president of the organization over it, there. Just maintaining uh, well, it? Well, trying to maintain it. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's kind of a tough thing to do. It's. Um, What's special about that cemetery? A lot of older graves? Oh, there? yeah. Yeah, it's pretty old. Is it? Yeah. Yeah, I wanna, it's not as old as the one in the center of East Granby or anything. Right. Uh, but uh, it's old, and there's a lot of folks from that area, you know, buried in the, Right. One of the things that I must do, and, and after talking with guys like Bill Westerfeld and, and things like that who uh, oversee cemeteries in East Granby, mm -hmm. they have a good handle on how to catalog who's in there and where they are and all that stuff. Right, and, right. And uh, my next process is, if I can get out of some of these other tasks that I'm in, uh, is to try and do that at the cemetery and right. do an actual layout. Cemeteries are fascinating places. <laughs> they really are. Yeah, I mean, yeah, my, a lot my, of history. My wife's not real keen to walking through them and looking at the gravestones, <laughs> but I like to do it. So it's, it's interesting. Yeah, it's yeah. fascinating. Yeah. And, you know, in, in old ones, you have to worry about broken stones and yeah, cockeyed stones maintaining. and all that. And, yeah. and we just don't have the bucks to be able to do that. So uh, it's a real, you know, it's a real right. problem to yeah. just keep it mowed. Right. So anyway, we do manage to do that, and it looks pretty nice, but uh, it's you, a... So that's one of your projects you're working on yeah. now. What, thinking back, you know, you, you raised your whole family in East Grammy. What were your perceptions of that? You know, yeah. I, actually, let me jump back real quick because I, I, this is a question I like to ask. You. What was your perception of East Grammy or your impression of East Grammy when you first came here? And, and what, what, obviously, you decided to raise your family here. <laughs> yeah, well, of course, there was no way I was going to move the redhead out of East Grammy. That was for sure. Oh, she lived here? Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. That's what I gotcha. say. She's been in East Granby. That's why we got to get her on 70 the show some odd years. Okay, yeah. right, right, right. <laughs> and so, uh, and her mom lived here and uh, uh, on School Street. And, okay. And so that's why we stayed there. Right. Uh, and of course, all the kids went to East Granby schools. Right. Uh, Matter of fact, I was on the Board of Education and chaired that, you know, as I told you, that yep. there wasn't a commission that I wasn't on or didn't Other than planning chair. and zoning, you were. Other than planning and yep. zoning. <laughs> uh, 
so, uh, as a matter of fact, so your first impression was you came here to visit your wife's family. Well, <laughs> your yeah, she yeah, brought you up wife, here, yeah, or your right. your girlfriend's yeah, family, right. yeah. And uh, it was small, but it was nice because everybody knew everybody. Right. We had a telephone system that was just unbelievable. You picked it up, and the operator said, "Number, please." If we had a fire in town, you picked the phone up, and she immediately told you where the fire was. Everybody in town knew exactly where the fire was in one instant. Really? Yeah. No Be dials, no nothing. Because you had a human operator. That's right. Yeah, right, right. And like the old thing where they'd plug it in like this? Is well, that I work? suppose. And of course, party <laughs> well, lines. If yeah. You, if you weren't careful, you'd be listening in on somebody else's conversation <laughs> okay, right. and, and things of that sort. But right. when it came to the fire department, I pleaded with the phone company, leave that old system in. Right. Because after that, we had to go to things like Plectrons, which activated, you know, at a central station. And right. That, and they only worked in half the locations in town, and so people didn't know there was a fire. Right. And of course, we used to sound the siren all the time. And, uh, and so it was like an instant alert network, the old was. style. Yeah, yeah, you could pretty it much. Was really, yeah. really great. Right. Uh, so anyway, we did that. Uh, you know, and as I say, the, the kids all went to school in town, and. Uh, uh, Luann, the year she graduated, I was chairman of the board uh -huh. of education, so I was able to hand her her diploma. That must have been which, nice. You know, it was kind of interesting. Quite a yeah. memory. And uh, got to meet some real nice people. I, we became very friendly with the superintendent of schools at the time, a guy by the name of Roy Brown. Uh, super guy. And, was he? And, yeah. yeah, he really an education guy. He uh, tried to do it without spending an arm and a leg. And That's the goal, right? Uh, yeah, <laughs> it's not it should easy. be the goal, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. So anyway... Uh, I, you know, I found that most people that are in, that, in the field of education are generally there for very committed reasons. I mean, oh, yeah. Usually, you know, they're serious about what they're doing. Oh, yeah. And they enjoy yeah. it. And, yeah, and, but anyway. And teachers especially. You yeah, know, they, exactly. You know, some of those teachers used to spend a quarter of their pay buying stuff I think a lot of them in the classrooms. You yeah, know, yeah. 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 Which was uh, good, you yeah. know. I felt uh, as to have that kind of dedication. And, Absolutely. And, uh, but it was easier then because schools were run a whole lot differently than they are today. Yeah. And, yeah. So, but um, oh, you know, Wilcox store in the center of town. I've probably heard about that. And yep. That's yep. where our post office was. Right. And, that was uh, right where the appliance store is now. Is that or right behind next no, to that? No. No. Uh, no. From oh, yourself? that's Hayes' house. Oh, okay. Uh, Wilcox store is right across from um, uh, JG's. Oh, okay. It was on that side of the street? Now, what was on the other side of the street where they built the little strip mall there? Where JG's is, you mean? No, further north, where the uh, dry cleaners was and the... Oh, north. Yeah. Wasn't there a store there, somebody said? No? Uh, no. That was a house. Okay, so those were just houses. That, they belonged to, to a guy by the name of Jim Miller, and he was a local appliance dealer at the time. <laughs> it's interesting that and there's he, still an appliance store. Yeah, and well. he had an, a little showroom there <laughs> that he used, and uh, they lived in a beautiful house. It was a two-family on the corner, a really, really nice house. Corner of School Street and... Well, yeah, it was corner of Turkey Hill Road and Main Street. Okay, got it. Yeah. Right, right. When I came to town... Our street lights were turned on and off by a guy that lived in the center of town. What do you mean? He would flip them? That's right. There was a pole out there with ropes hanging on the thing. Mm -hmm. He'd really? turn them on at night <laughs> oh, no. and turn them off in the morning. Oh, no, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, that's you got to think about this. Yeah, thing. right, that, right. That's right. how long ago that No was. computers to turn no, off. No, yeah, and, and no photoelectric funny. cells and things of that so sort. So he would come out every morning and yeah, pull the street. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And sometimes he, he wasn't able to get out or something, and I'd come riding through town and see the lights on, so I'd stop and jerk the rope and turn yeah. them off. And, yeah. Uh, but anyway, uh, and that center, you know, was 
a whole lot different where Route 20 goes through now. That was a street through there with right. some two-family houses and single-family houses and, and uh, houses in front of the church. Uh, there was a house there, and uh, you mean on the church's lawn? Right? Yeah, in the front the lawn, lawn where that tree yeah. is. There, Interesting. Yeah. 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 Um, so the church was actually set back a little bit. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah so, yes, that's right. And well, that's course, an, I, in some ways you'd think that's an improvement. It's a beautiful site yeah, now yeah. through the center of town. And of course, the only access was down that road or one from School Street, in that went in past uh, uh, Granger's old houses. I don't know if you Church know Road. Church Road, yes. which is now yeah. just a one-way yeah street. Thumbs on to Route Twenty. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, right. Wow. Huh. So uh, uh, that was, you know, the way that was way back then. Uh, uh, awful lot of really neat people in town, and uh, now that's another question I always try to ask people. What, Tell us about a character from back then, somebody that jumps up into your memory. or Everybody has somebody they remember so-and-so? Well, <laughs> remember somebody for us. <laughs> well, it's tough. I, <laughs> there was a young guy by the name of, uh, well, his father was in town first, a guy by the name of Prevo. Okay. And he ran Prevo's Garage in the center of town. Okay. Is that where the body shop is now, or is it a different place? Yeah, that's where yeah, the body okay. shop is. That's right. And that was Prevo's garage, right. and, and eventually his son took it over, John, J.J., we call him, Johnny Jr., and uh, who just passed away this last year or so. Hmm. And uh, then up at the corner, or up past J.G.'s, okay, on the side of the road that the uh, uh, town garage is. Going south. Going south. Okay. Uh, Right on that hill, right on the road, there was a Chevrolet dealership there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Adams Garage, and uh, we were talking about that with uh, Chick last week, last last show. Yeah, about, Chick would know, uh, you know, yeah. remember that a lot better than I. Well, how many it? towns had like two and three little dealerships in the middle of towns? So that's small right. Small dealerships. You know, that's that right. Were, yeah. Because Prevo sold Hudson's. Okay, okay. okay. So right on the corner. That's right. 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 That's right. And and Amico Gas which was white gas, which was the best thing in the world for a lawnmower. Oh, Because okay. it never went bad, <laughs> oh, okay. which was kind of interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, Good old days, if yeah. you like to think about. Then, um, oh, who else was it? So anyway, uh, that garage eventually was taken over by the town and used as a town garage until they oh. built a new one. Interesting. Uh, matter of fact, that happened right after I got out of office. Uh, they built yeah. the, the current yeah, garage. Yeah, we, we, <laughs> we had a little bit of contaminated earth up there that needed to be moved. And, uh, the new one or the old one? The old one. Yeah. yeah. And uh, we that managed was pretty it. pretty standard in yeah. any sort of automotive use in those days. Yeah, right. So anyway, uh, that area was cleaned up, and, and uh, it now is pretty nice, as you yeah, can beautiful. recall. And of course, with the library back there and the, uh, the senior center, etc., whatever, and yep. you know, it, it uh, it's a beautiful complex, and uh, really, really works quite well. We're pretty lucky to get that in there, actually. Yeah, it seems like it all came together pretty well. Yeah, yeah. It, it it did. It was really good. You know, one of the, one of our guests, I think it was Ed Phillips, uh, told me that which he, I've some since seen because I walked in there and I see it. But there's a pond back there. A pretty oh, yeah. substantial part. But you know, I'll bet you most of the people in town don't know it's there. Well, that may be true. Unless it's you, overgrown. Yeah, unless yeah. you get there around goose season. But even when you, I didn't, I've been, I've walked to the library from the community center or senior center yeah, up yeah. the hill. Yeah. And, and until I walked over and looked, that's a pretty good piece of, of uh, wetlands. Well, that's there. right. Pretty, yeah. I think that was created by the, uh, what you call it, the quarry. Okay. You know. So it diverted some of the water yeah, down and right. formed a pond. Yeah, yeah. Right. And of okay. course, that you know that was here ever since I can remember, mm. back in the fifties. Uh, right. Uh, Pat and I built a house up on the Bayberry Drive, where, where we lived uh, for you know many years. Where's yeah. Bayberry Drive? <laughs> Why don't I know where that? I mean, go down Hillcrest. Okay. All right. Yeah. No, I know. And where take it, yeah. a right on Bayberry. Well, All right. we were at the 
dead end of that cul-de-sac right up on top of the hill. Okay. And that's where we had that view of the East Granby and Bradley, right. and it was gorgeous. Uh, Angelo Ron Carey lived right next to us. The owner of the yeah, quarry. Yeah. quarry, yeah. yeah. And uh, his wife, Teresa, was a, just a jewel. She was a great person. Really? Yes. And um, I can remember having her call Pat and say, Pat, send those kids down to use the swimming pool, otherwise Angie has to clean it. She said. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> but uh, uh, that's the way it was. As a matter of fact, uh, uh, we were having a wedding reception for Pam, and uh, the weather turned foul, and we were going to have the wedding reception in the yard. Right. And Teresa called Pat, and she said, Pat, get down here. Let's make arrangements to move the wedding reception into our house. Oh, that was nice. You know, Good neighbors. Yeah. yeah. I mean, just super, super. It's great neighbors, yeah. yeah. Salt yeah. of the earth. Type so, people. you know, you've, you've been through quite a bit here in town. What, what, what's the biggest change? Oh, my gosh. I mean, maybe it's not one, but what, what would you say is a... Well, of course, the fact that our industrial base has grown, very important. Right. And we, we're we very, very lucky to, to have that I don't that think happen. a lot of people appreciate that. Well, I mean, they don't appreciate what a big part of the... Of, of, exactly. Uh, or how much it's actually grown in the last 40, 50 years. Yeah, and, and it's, it's really, really an it's important key. aspect yeah. uh, to what's happened in town. And, and I'd have to call that a change. The center itself... It has changed, you know, uh, that area around the church and around where the, the mall is, where the Suffield Bank is, and that area in there. Uh, totally, totally different from anything that right. uh, you would uh, you would think about. You yeah, know? yeah, I'm starting uh, to get a picture of it from talking to all you folks and yeah. where it was laid out. But. Uh, and uh, other than that, uh, you, you know, where things were added, like the golf course way back, you know, over in Copper Hill. Yeah, yeah. Um, there, there were a lot of interesting people in town. I, yeah. I, I must admit that. I, uh, I think of Howard Griffin over on Griffin Road. Okay. Uh, over by Copper Hill. Yeah. And his family and uh, his daughter, who was very friendly with my wife. You know, just great salt of the earth type people, yep. and uh, uh, ran a farm, and and you know, just just really great. Yeah. Uh, and Charlie Root was another really interesting guy, and and a, a guy that uh, did a lot of, you know, was in town for a long time, and a hard working farmer type right. of guy, and uh, really good. Part of the real fabric of the town. Yeah, these old folks. Yeah, 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 right. Uh, there are other folks in town uh, that were different, you know. They, yeah. They, but uh, gotta have some color. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> right. That's right. It's it boring. Yeah. yeah. So uh, uh, I don't know. Of course, I you always remember Effie Miller. She was our town clerk for years and years and years. Okay. And uh, she was in the, the little building. You know, I don't know if she ever got over to the new town hall or not, or whether she retired before that time. She was a real go-to kind of person. Huh? Oh, she yeah. Didn't, Effie, she didn't shirk responsibility. No, no, she, Effie she was right there. And, made it happen. Uh, yeah, her and Norm Adams, uh, you probably heard that name. Yep. Uh, Norm was quite a guy, and he was selectman for quite a few years. The guy I remember most was old, old man Seymour. Okay. Um, Lute Seymour. Lute. Lute. I'm pretty sure that's his name. Yeah, he was yeah. on the Board of Education. He was a chairman for a long time. Oh, right? yes. A couple of people have talked about him. Oh, he's yeah. quite a guy. I can remember sitting at board meetings, and it would get to be 10 o'clock. And um, Dudley, his name was. Dudley, Lute. right, Dudley. right, right. Okay. Dudley would stand up and say, yeah, time that nothing good can be done in this meeting. I will see you folks at the next <laughs> meeting. And off he'd go. Super guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Super guy and bright. Yeah. He used to have, uh, <laughs> you know, you think about sand trucks and stuff. Yeah. He'd have two kids on the back of a truck yeah, I've the heard sand up yeah. under the road. <laughs> uh, but. It got the job done, got right? the job done. Yeah, what yeah, the heck, was, yeah. 
you know, it was, of course, the roads were a lot different then. Uh, you didn't have 10 million cars going down uh, yeah. Route 20 or up 187. Uh, right, right. You know, it was right. totally different. Type a few of less thing. developments yeah. and yeah. stuff like that. Yeah. Right. But, uh, and of course, that was the other thing developments as they started. You know, uh, of course, Miller Road was one of the first. And then, uh, right. Yeah. And then it went to uh, uh, across the street from there. Uh, <laughs> the development of South End. Uh, what the heck was Spoonville? They Down that way? Well, yeah, on yeah. Spoonville Road or off Spoonville, both sides. Melody Acres. Okay, is that what they called the whole? I know Melody Road, yeah. but that's yeah, what they called the whole development? Yeah, Melody, Melody Acres. Acres. Okay. And then uh, Winding Hills yep. went in after that. Uh, and those were major developments. Sure, they that, still the bulk of the population yeah. town lives there. Yeah. That's right, yeah. that's right. And, and of course, that changed a lot of things because then schools had to be upgraded and yeah. things of that sort. Because People were still having three, four, or five kids back then. Yeah, yeah. and I can't say anything because I was ahead of the list. <laughs> But, uh, that, you know, that's the way it was. Yeah. yeah. So that was uh, interesting times. You had yeah. the... Uh, so uh, let me just ask you a couple quick questions here. If there was anything that you could do different, uh, would you have... What would you say that would be, looking back, if there's anything... That, I mean, hindsight's twenty twenty. <laughs> yeah, mine isn't, though, really. No. <laughs> I, that's, that's an interesting question. Well, you know a lot of the inside information of why these things happen. So it's probably, you know, you know why these things were done. It's not... Yeah. I, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know. Uh, uh, I think that <laughs> two minutes. I think that the town developed much the way it should have. So you're happy you know, with the way I, things. Yes, and, and we got a lot of nice people in town. There's no question about that. Yeah. yeah. Let me ask you one more question. Um, if you had advice for kids growing up today, what would that be? You know, get their education. Education. That seems to be yeah, a, a very important. Uh, you know, stay away from drugs mm -hmm. and things of that sort uh, because I'm death on that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. And uh, uh, go on, you know, pick some kind of a profession and follow through with it with your you know, college or further schooling. I don't care whether it's uh, learning how to bake cakes or uh, uh, whatever, you know. Take just, advantage of schools, yeah, and stay with it, and lead exactly. a clean, good life. As yeah, best you can. Stay yeah, away yeah. That's, okay. that's the secret. All right. Well, it looks like we're out of time, but I wanted to thank you. This has been a thrill. I mean, I, I, I almost feel like I could spend about four hours talking to you here tonight. No, but, we just uh, go on. I'm sorry I go on and on. No, no, no. That's exactly what we want, and I yeah. really appreciate it. Tonight, our guest, once again, was Charles Chady from East Granby, a longtime resident, former first selectman. Uh, we're, we're on every Friday night at 8 8 p.m. on GCTV Channel 16, and we hope you're enjoying this as much as I am, and I'm hoping my, my guests are too. Have a good yeah. night.